political zones is expected to house at least 1,000 houses. Joining me on this discussion this morning is uh, architect or engineer Churchill Azubiki, ISU, who is a civil engineer, as well as Mr. Moses Abba, who is the founder and CEO Hilvard Realty. He is also a real estate developer and broker. Gentlemen, you're very much welcome to the program. Thank you very much. Well, so, let, let me start with you, um, Moses. Yeah. You are in the business of real estate in Abuja. Mm -hmm. And uh, the renewed hope city that the president hampered on in his broadcast yesterday is one that is also being constructed here in Abuja in Karsana. Uh, knowing the business fully well, how do you think this can mitigate the housing deficits in the country? I think yeah, um, this is a very um, fantastic move by the president to actually, you know, uh, mitigate the housing um, deficit in Nigeria. You know, currently, as we all know, we have um, 20, 28 million um, housing deficit, and this is quite worrisome. And of course, we are expecting to increase. You understand? Um, the the it's very very understandable that of course the government alone cannot provide all these houses yes. but for the for, for for the president to make this um, outstanding move is a great one because um i understand that we are the the person the, the project yes. is actually catering for one uh, one hundred thousand housing uh, units across uh, the country across the country yes and of course lagos and abuja will be having twenty thousand each from that uh, 100,000. And the one that has been launched um, in Kasana, which is more like the um, phase one. Flagship. Yeah, the uh, flagship. Uh, the the things of the project. Exactly. Um, it's a fantastic one because, of course, in, um, aside from the fact that Abuja is is having, I, I would I say, like 10%, the 10% out of the 20, 28 million housing deficit we have, you understand? Covers in, in Abuja, we, we have over two million housing deficits in Abuja. You understand? So we are having, um, you know, the government provide twenty thousand. It's a great fit. And then, of, of course, I like the system which the government is taking to provide this um, um, housing. Uh, housing. The project currently, yes. uh, the public-private partnership. So I think generally it's a great move, and it's also, of course, um, the low and middle-income earners now have a chance to be able to own a home, especially in Abuja. Currently, we are having a lot of issues with um, people not being able to afford rent because it's very, very high. You understand? Uh, people not being able to afford houses. Is it? It's all like in Nigeria generally only ten percent of people who um, want to in, own a home actually have the capacity to do so. To do so. Yeah. so it's a great fit for the government and in a nutshell what I really like is that the government because it's a public private partnership yeah. so it means that the government and the private sector can actually collaborate in reducing the housing deficit which I think, I think is very very great. Well, well coming over to you now in engineer Azubiki. Uh, this is a statement that the president made yesterday although let's not digress into other matters yeah. I, I believe it, it wasn't expected as part of what um, you know the protest planners or the protesters expected the president to say yeah. however since it has been said let's address it you are a civil engineer there's a housing deficit in the country particularly in abuja where there's mass migration of people who are looking for greener pastures how realistic are these um renewed hope cities that are going to be you know erected across the uh, states of the country uh, well realistic realistically speaking to mitigate the housing deficit let me get your take on that um the point here is uh, actually there's a missing link between availability of houses and affordability of houses you may have houses because in Abuja, for instance, you have many unoccupied houses and how many people that don't have a place to stay or home accommodation. So, and this is like part of the disconnect in government policies and the hearings of the people. If as the president is talking about provision of 3,212 uh, uh, 3, houses in Abuja, in Abuja. The, the other thing is how is he going to help these people that are on the street? There was no communication on the policy that made them assess it. 
because in Nigeria where we have had issue in housing, what causes the housing deficit is we don't have a mortgage system like another developed part of the world where people have 25 years, 30 year payment, prepayment plan. Any mortgage you are getting into in Nigeria, they give you 12 months, as long as 24 months to pay. And, and most people who access mortgage uh, plans in Nigeria are often civil servants. Yes. So if, if somebody who is not a civil servant wants to access the renewed uh, Hope City or a building in the renewed Hope City, how possible is it for uh, someone who is not in the system to do that? There's no policy except you have your cash to pay. But if we are to begin to provide a solution or talk or come up with ideas on how we can make it affordable, we can, we can, there have been some uh, developers that have come with rent to own. That rent to own policy should be lauded by the federal government where they build a house, you take it on a rent, but that your rent is counting equivalent to owning so that property. Yes. Because people pay rent for 10 years and when they don't have means of sustaining, they are ejected out. And because there's no, no future of owning that property, some people even have interest in other, that doesn't their phone, other things that focusing on paying that rent. If someone knows that this rent I'm paying will end up helping me own this property, they will pay with diligence, knowing that they are paying for the house they will own. And that burden will lessen for them. Well, we're talking about rent to own. Uh, mm -hmm. it's, it's one of the um, modalities that you you know, take at Hilbert Realty to ensure that, you know, affordable housing mm -hmm. uh, reaches everyone, especially in Abuja. Mm -hmm. But I want you to just hold your thoughts on that while we take a look at the president's address yesterday where he talked about the renewed hope cities across the six geopolitical zones of the Federation. Six months ago in Kasana, Abuja, I inaugurated the first phase of our ambitious housing initiative, the Renew Hope City and Estate. This project is the first of six we have planned across the nation's geopolitical zones. Each of these cities will include a minimum of 1,000 housing units, with Kasana itself set to deliver 3,212 units. In addition to this city project, we are also launching the Renew Hope Estate in every state, each comprising 500 housing units. Our goal is to complete a total of 100,000 housing units over the next three years. This initiative is not only about providing homes but also about creating thousands of jobs across the nation, as well as stimulating economic growth. Well, the president there uh, speaking about the Renewed Hope City. Uh, one thing uh, that he pointed out that I want you to talk on is, uh, you know, he said it's not just about about building houses, but also about job creation. Firstly, I had asked about the rent to own. So let me give you your thoughts on rent to own before um, the other question. Okay. Yes. Um, just like. Um my colleague here mentioned, um, rent to own is actually a great way for um, low and middle income earners to actually uh, have the chance at owning a home, especially in a very competitive environment like Abuja. Yes. Now, um, we've been able to achieve that by you know um, building affordable houses at locations where the 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 uh, land cost is not that um, much. You understand because one of the challenges is the land cost for developers, you understand? So we've been able to achieve that through partnerships as well. Now we bring in um, people who are looking forward to, you know, own a home, understand, okay, we go into an agreement with them and then they have a, a payment uh, period. And, you know, we understand, we, we came to understand that is on a, on a, on a normal ground when you, when you rent out your apartment yes. to, um, to, to a tenant, right? It's usually the first one year, two years is easy for them to remit their rents. You understand? But you know, when it subsequently it becomes hard, you understand? But when it comes to the fact uh, to the rent to own uh, aspect, it's easier for them because they believe they are buying it. 
You understand? So there's a more personal interest. They are not seeing the house as um, that of the developer. They are seeing it as, as theirs. So, and even maintenance becomes quite uh, not as cumbersome or hard for for the developer. For the developer, you understand? So and so far it's been great. But I, I think um, for sustainability, the government has to also come in in providing sustainable policies that can be able to make sure we can scale. You understand? Well, well in terms of job creation, the yes. president rightly mentioned it. Now, uh, quite right, it will create jobs mm -hmm. for people to come and work, you know, at locations where the project is holding. Mm -hmm. But my question to you is how sustainable are these jobs or are they just short term uh, gigs mm -hmm. that people will do for a couple of months? Uh, mm -hmm. If the project perhaps ends, what happens to these jobs that have been created, the thousands of jobs that the president mm -hmm. said will be created as a result of um, mm -hmm. the project? Well, um, like I would always say, I would always say that the government cannot provide jobs for every citizen, right? However, it's, it's, it's the sole responsibility of the government to help in easing the unemployment rate in Nigeria. Now, for the job creation in terms of this particular project, I, uh, there's, it's going to provide, I think, over 1 million jobs, just, I think, one million Abuja alone, and so on, spanning the lifespan of the project. You understand so both direct and indirect jobs so of course there are people that could attain um, a certain level of financial um, freedom through the process of the lifespan of the project but um, there is actually no sustainability because once the project is done that means the job is, is, is uh, yeah, exactly even for contractors for new contractors so it's within the lifespan of the project so I mean, it's just a short term uh, ease I would say to you know the unemployment rate in Nigeria. Yeah. Well, crossing over to you, uh, engineer Churchill, you mentioned earlier that there are lots of houses in the FCT that are lying dormant without people being able to access them, especially due to the high cost of these um, properties. Now, in your um, experience or years that you've spent as a civil engineer, I'm sure you've seen the rising cost of homes in the last couple of years. Houses are becoming almost impossible for the common man to acquire. How does this renewed hope city come in to placate some of uh, these homes that are, you know, too expensive for, for people to, to, to buy? Like my colleague has said um, about the cost of uh, developing, uh, for developers because of the cost of land, uh, if the government can go into partnership in the sense of making land, taking care of the cost of land, because they are the ones that allocate land, if they can give a developer land for free at a very low subsidy rate and condition are there, for those that are doing rent to own, yes. especially those pol those are putting down on those policies, if they are offered land at no at subsidized prices or even no cost at all, okay. but with the with the mandate or the uh, uh, agreement that those that will rent this on these are the price you are going to pay it with a work out plan on with the land cost taken away, and possibly also there should be an aspect of subsidizing building materials for those homes. If they can subscribe using material that we use for those homes, the cost of that building will come down, basically. And for those that have built houses that are unoccupied, government should have a policy on either how to either take over those homes and pay them off and give it to the masses or have a better working arrangement or, or see that those buildings must be put on a mortgage arrangement for a period of time. Occupied. Well, I, I remember when the current minister of the FCT, uh, Barrister Yasun Wiki, came into power, one of the pronouncements he made at the very early days of his regime, uh, or his administration, was that abandoned projects in the FCT must either be completed or construction must continue on them. And we've seen in the last few months, People have, you know, sworn to action. A lot of government infrastructure projects have been completed, and on the other hand, private sector infrastructures have also kicked off. However, in contrast to this, in places like Kashi, for instance, or Apuasa, where we find, um, you know, the expressway that is currently being constructed, and the FCT minister also made a pronouncement that in the next seven months it will be completed. Instead of prices of 
lot of land there to sort of remain at a stable uh, rate we saw a sudden skyrocketing of prices if situations like this persist in the country do we see an end to this particular means of of uh, high cost of housing anytime soon well uh, we can't obviously well, how, how can the government ensure that when infrastructure projects come to a particular district that is developing that the prices do not unnecessarily go out of hand the, the, the point here is that uh, individual and private developers are there to make profit. So the only thing is that government should always be at competition with private developers by going into partnerships with as much developers as possible so that those that don't have partnership with government will not be competing with those that have partnership with government. And because of government's influence and support to those that have partnership with them, it will cause the rest to come down. In their price because if you are getting a property when the road was not done at a low price and because the road is now paved and tired you are going higher you are not going higher increasing increasing prices of property by up to 500 percent it's not because uh, you want to break even if you want to take advantage of the opportunity but government stepping into partnership with some developers will help bring down the prices well let, uh, let, let me get your take on this, uh, mm. uh, Mr. Moses. Yeah. Uh, particularly in shanty towns in the FCT, mm. uh, we've seen situations where developers move into a particular area or they're about to take over um, a plot of land where there are, there are shanties, people living in, in you know, corrugated roof houses and the rest, and mm. you know, the issue of settlements coming and the, and the rest. Mm. Do you think that perhaps instead of the burden being solely on developers, maybe the government can sort of, you know, take up a little bit of that load mm -hmm. to um, help with the cost of uh, settlements for these people. Well, um, I, I so considering the fact that they are even illegal settlements. Mm, yes, yes. Well, I, I think um, well the government could come in, but I think the major aspect in which we um, the government can play a significant role in such cases is by being able to provide policies. Yes, you understand policies that can be able to give access to each group. Of um uh, of persons in Nigeria, both the low, the middle income earners and high, uh, high income earners, understand. And one thing that I keep on saying is that um, I like the fact that the Renew Hope um, Housing Project has been able to replicate something that if we can get it on a large scale, will really really reduce the housing um, deficit in Nigeria because the the the, the model which, the model at which it is being applied is that you know the the uh, the ministry provides the uh, enabling environment mm -hmm. for uh, the enabling environment and then the off takers you know then for the custodian of developers who have the funds to come in to build you understand so if the government can do that generally yes now by providing that enabling environment and then off takers the opticals are being provided by the uh, mortgage banks, mm -hmm. you understand, to, to, of course, to the ministries and all that. So it is an enabling environment, you understand. We will not be having a lot of people in those shanties. And if there are policies, it won't even be difficult for the developer to settle the, um, the settlers, the illegal settlement or whatever, but it won't be difficult. And so, so there really needs to be a presence of the government in all the value chain of development in order to be able to you know mitigate this housing uh, issue so to answer your question i would say that yes the government will come in but i think it's not even a major issue in terms of the housing uh, this, uh, deficit, deficit yeah. understand it's not a major issue in terms of settling those uh, shanties the major issue should be in the policies and should be the, of course um like my colleague said he he mentioned the high rise of the cost of construction materials you understand it's 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 when uh, people developers are in business to make profit to make profit yes. you understand and i was making a research on how we can be able to put a ceiling to the you know the rent house in abuja because it's high we have over 600 um houses that are empty people cannot afford it you understand so it's empty now okay uh, recently the senate was talking about you know being able to regulate the rent house to bring it down to monthly rent 
You understand? So you pay an upfront of three months, and then subsequently, mm -hmm. subsequently mm -hmm. you pay more mm -hmm. monthly. Uh, and then as as we find in other mm -hmm. plans of the world. Exactly. But I mean, again, we were talking about you know putting a, a ceiling to the rent. You understand? But when you put a thing into you know uh, the rent uh, rent house uh, a, a, a tenant can pay it means then you are you are, you are bridging or you are trying to suppress the profit margin for yes, the, 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 the developers the exactly which in the long run will reduce investors coming into nigeria or even the, in, the, the investors in nigeria going into the housing market because when when, when the market will make profit and you understand that real estate keeps appreciating so well, I would say that there really needs to be a presence, like as simple as the interest interest rate is yeah. very very high. If a developer wants to access uh, loans from the banks, interest rates are very very high. And in a system where you need to provide infrastructure, because we have low infrastructure in terms of in here, that most places don't have infrastructure. So you as a developer, you have to provide the infrastructure yourself. Well, well, well realistically speaking, now yeah. for, for you as a developer and someone who has been in the business, do you think that um, the monthly uh, rents mm -hmm. policy that you know is being proposed by the Senate mm -hmm. is perhaps a substantial one that is workable? Well, I, I mean, uh, uh, mm -hmm. excluding yeah. excluding the the ceiling, mm -hmm. the ceiling peg for. Uh, the, the cost of monthly rent. Okay. Well, I think it's a it's a great one, right? It's a great one, especially there are two two ways to it. Mostly, it will be a, a little bit favorable to those who have um, monthly income, which I would say the civil servants. Yes. And I think the only way that can be be uh, possible if if the government put a system whereby your rent goes directly from your salaries to the uh, landlord. Yes. Almost like a mortgage. Right? Exactly, almost like a, like a mortgage. Because at the end of the day, we're looking at okay, people, um, people having that um, that luxury of putting out a chunk of their salaries. Because of course, you understand the climate of of, of the financial yeah, economy, economy yeah, the reality exactly. that we are facing in exactly. the country. Yes, I think it's a great system, but it will be very very doable if there is a, a conducive economic climate. No, no, uh, no. Uh, Engineer Azubiki, I, I saw you nodding when he mentioned uh, the monthly rents policy by the Senate. Uh, what do you subscribe to this, or do you share a different uh, line of thought? Uh, I share uh, a slightly a different line of thought. Okay. Uh, in the sense that it should be made a bit optional. It should be made a bit optional. Depend base. It should be a tenant. If you want, a tenant should be given an option because some tenants' monthly arrangement may not work for them. They will prefer yearly arrangement. Yearly arrangement. In the same that uh, some people, based on the organization they work, they are paid housing allowance at the end of the year, which they channel to pay their rent. If they are having that kind of arrangement and you are to be collecting the money monthly because some of their salary are being kept to accumulate and able to pay a rent. The work is left for them cannot afford their paying monthly yes. again. So that's why I, I, I subscribe to an optional arrangement based on what works. If a tenant, a tenant should have the right to say, I want monthly or yearly, not the landlord in this case now, because if you leave it optional openly, some landlord may insist on monthly. But where a tenant wants a monthly arrangement, the tenant, sh uh, the landlord should be able to to either either yeah, accept, accept or decline. No, it should, it should not have the option of declining. That's what I mean. Okay. The policy is that it shouldn't. But if a tenant now wants a, mo a yearly payment, the landlord should not also decline. Yeah. That so that means the tenant should have the right to choose the pattern that he wants. Payment that payment. that they want. They want. That would be easier yeah. for them yeah. to pay because yeah. the most important that that rent comes as at when due. Mm -hmm. And also, there should also be punishment because looking at the policy, to honest, it seems one sided to the landlord in favor of the landlord, in favor of the tenants. The monthly okay. payments being the right of the tenant, like as I subscribe, being the right of the tenant to choose either to pay monthly or pay yearly, not the landlord's right in this case. On the other hand, to balance it and give the landlord some leverage, leverage mm -hmm. with that. You should not falter in any of the ones you choose. There should be consequences for either failing to 
pay because we are the one that shows the options. T talking about those consequences, uh, engineer, we, we've seen in recent times or as the Nigerian landlord tenant situation has always been where the landlord asks, evicts a tenant from a house and they go to court. Yeah. And then the court asks the tenant to stay for a certain period of time, six months, six months and in most cases they go back to court. It's it's quite a dirty business yeah. in that in that um, in that uh, space, yeah. and mostly in favor of the tenant and disfavor of the landlord. How can we change this policy to favor both parties where there is a level playing ground? Nobody gets cheated and nobody gets the win more than the other. Okay. Doing it uh, proportionately, for instance, if a yearly or an annual renter person has uh, six months yes. for litigation before it can be evicted for the 14 in rent, a monthly payment person should have like six weeks. <laughs> 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 With that, some people yeah. may prefer, they, a lot of them may prefer being the litigation. So those are the balances that because so it's a holistic it should be a holistic policy change because if you don't change that law of six month litigation and you are subscribed to monthly payment and someone that defaults the monthly payment you are going to drive the person a landlord for six months is I, I mean six months is, is, is half a year so if, if they could stay for half a year if the rent is two million that's about one million no, dollar no, no. what, what 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 do you think mr Moses? I, I, it's, it's actually not favorable to the um, landlord yeah. i'm telling you because um at, at the end of the day we understand that the of course the economy is not favorable for everyone but it, it, it's business yeah, at the end of the day and um if these policies can be um like you said be worked on to be favorable to both parties because six months is a lot <laughs> six months is a lot and um most you, you find cases uh, from first hand experience where the tenants become very very um uh, non-challenged I mean, non-challenged exactly non-challenged and they don't really uh, put on effort because they know uh, take me to court you know take them to court they know that of course the law is in their favor and so I think it creates some laxity in their end yes. in being able to, you know, put that discipline in providing the rents at, as at when due. So I think that, that policy should be looked at a little. And of course, for the, and then again, for landlords again, the policies should really be implemented to mitigate or should I say reduce the housing, uh, the rent, the, yes, the housing deficit and the rental. Yes. Of course, my rent is very, very important. Well, uh, thank you, Mr. Moses, for sharing your thoughts on this. We are, I'm still in the studio with engineer Churchill Azubike, uh, who is a civil engineer, as well as Mr. Moses Abba, who is founder CEO, Hilbert Realty, a real estate developer and broker. And we have been discussing ways to mitigate the housing deficit in the FCT and beyond, in line with the uh, president's. Uh, speech and address to the nation yesterday the 4th of august addressing the uh, uh the renewed hope city that is planned to be constructed in the six geopolitical zones of the nation remember to also share your thoughts with us across our social media handles at adbn uh, tv also you can watch us on dstv channel 258 on star times channel 140 avo tv app libex world tv app and niger tv app for more stories you can also visit our website on www.adbntv.com now back to the conversation uh mr moses you are a real estate developer and uh from all indications we know how expensive properties are in abuja yes and most as our engineer Azubike has rightly pointed out, there, there are a lot of houses that are lying dormant. Properties, you also mentioned about 600 houses lying dormant in the FCT. Yes. Uh, is it by any chance that uh, developers can sort of stem down their prices? I know any businessman goes into business for the sake of profit. Perfect, yeah. But we have seen developers taking advantage of say customers or clients and you know shooting up their prices mm. far more than they should is there a way to regulate this and have an even price mm. where you know the developer makes profit but on the other hand the buyer also has a, a fair buy at right. the property 
Well, I think um, I would like to reply to this in terms of what I say the butterfly effect. You understand that a little change actually causes a big reaction. You know, yes, of course the developer can be able to step down the prices. But you would look at how the developer comes up with this um, construction and of course the houses yes. okay the developer has to get loans sometimes if he's not getting loans, is in you know probably opium you know um, investments comes in in different ways and this invest investment comes with interest rates if it's from the bank i just i talked about the high um, interest rates from um, you know the yeah, very, exactly high interest rates and these are government policies you know that affect these the prices of this property and um, and especially in abuja where we are having high cost of land you understand so you put you're buying the high uh, you're buying the land at a very high cost you are providing infrastructure like i said especially in most areas yeah. and then also if you are look if you're taking investment or loan from the bank you're getting it at a high interest rate so these things you consider it and at the end of the day the property in itself even without you putting your profit margin is already high for the average or should i say the low and middle income earners the property in itself without your profit margin just the cost of the construction is already high so at the end of the day even if you do your profit margin it will still be high Understand? So I think at the, uh, for a, the developers to be able to step down prices, it has to be a collaboration process between the government and the developers. It's a collaboration process because uh, you look at you would look at um, other cases where we're having a affordable um, housing yeah. projects. You would look at there's a system to it that the government is always present where there is affordable housing projects like the the the, the project of the renewed hope city. currently exactly we have um 80 percent that is going to um the um low and um, middle mm -hmm. income mm -hmm. earners and then we have 20 percent of course for those that cannot be able to you know go, they don't have that sort of value to be able to access and so it's been able it's been speeded but at the end of the day developers can also help in being in, in stepping down the prices of you know, the houses to make it affordable they can help him you know being um more pragmatic and what i mean by by that is looking at um being more innovative this is where innovation comes in you understand looking at what other countries are doing to provide affordable housing projects how can we be able to you know um uh, get to produce construction materials locally and being supervised by experts and so that it can be more affordable you understand how can we be uh, be able to get innovations like um uh, let's say alternative construction materials alternative construction materials that can be able to bring down these prices so i think we, when developers start to think outside the box how to become more innovative i think there will be a, a, a huge um uh, decrease in terms of the prices yes. oh, well, well let me get a take now engineer uh, you mentioned earlier uh, something about uh the high cost of building materials and as mr moses also rightly pointed out there has to be alternative means of um sourcing for these building materials locally or alternative means of housing in general as your uh, profession as for a profession civil engineering you know you deal with houses yep. construction of houses and ensuring that you know they are up to standard what other means or alternative means of housing can maybe the nigerian government or even private developers um you know take up to ensure that housing is provided to the populace or what 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 alternative means of houses of housing can be explored yeah like there are two ways like he, he mentioned about um different local construction materials yes one is uh, local construction materials the lot that goes into it with local production and sh uh, studying the environment that can withstand such materials yeah. to check online other climbs there are that uh, building material that are being used like for instance there's a building material i always wish we can have it's more like it's not like a tent like structure but it's decent and it's movable okay. if you can if it's movable you can just assemble it in a place and people just put a little infrastructure people can settle there you, may, you have a lot of vast land that are not being used but in our plan because of insecurity putting people there 
put them in danger. Okay, we, we have also seen people explore options of using container, uh, shipping containers to you know build houses. Yes. Even here in the F city. Yes. Those are options when properly padded because those containers can be hot. Actually, based on our weather and the, the climate, climate change, it can be hot. Except we're properly padded, and you have to run with having AC in it. When we don't have uh, adequate power supply and you are staying in those kind of place as a house, it comes with its own challenges. But on the side of reducing costs, as my brother talks about for developers, there are some agencies like government are giving some people single digit interest loans. loans. For developers that are developing for the masses at a reduced cost, if there are such projects will be tied with a single digit loan, it can go a long way to bring down costs so that people can access those houses and can be affordable. The sincerity we have in this country actually that despite what the Mr. President have said about the housing 1000, looking at our population, it's, it's not like uh, a drop in an ocean, in an ocean because Nigerian population is growing like over 5 million almost every year. We are, we are currently at 220 million. Uh -huh. So when you are giving maybe less than a million house every year and your population is growing at 5 million or about every year, you can't cash up. We need to rejig and think in the light of our population growth if we actually must arrest this situation. Because one of the policies this government has made that is also even crippling developers. My brother, I'm sorry, has not mentioned me that they have a bond. They create the, 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 the interest rate on bond was more attractive for the people, investors. So many of people that could have put their money in real estate quickly to take the money out and put in bond. And the government needed money to fund the project, so they brought that. But on the other hand, yeah, the government, but on the other hand, is squeezing the developers because people, and that's why if you shake, the high cost of building material was high, then the investors are now putting their money in bonds thereby squeezing developers and consequently affecting housing availability for many Nigerians. Well, well Mr. Moses, he, he quite rightly made a point there, yeah. talking about the government bonds right. that most investors have shifted their attention to. How is this affecting your industry? Well, it's, 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 it's causing a big um, effect. Um, and then, of course, like um, he said, now the government, like, well, now, the idea of the bond is for the government to fund um, projects, you understand? But I, I believe you also double as an accountant, so this is this is quite a good one. Exam. Yes, yes, it is. But, so like that's, that's what I'm trying to have, find a balance to yes. you, right? Now the idea of the bonds is for government to be able to fund projects, right? And then now the ripple effect is the fact that, okay, now I would, I would now sit down as an investor and like, okay, how much do I get? from putting my money into real estate and um, from putting my money into bonds and of course I would find that the bonds are much uh, high in terms of return on investment and I'll opt for it. Now it now becomes a, an issue of two things. If we're looking at re reducing the housing deficit, mm -hmm. um, for we developers, we go into business Aside from the fact that we're into business to make the profit, we're into business to, re to, to reduce the housing deficit. So it now separates the segment of those who want who are home by who want to become ho homeowners, yeah. right? And those who are actually who actually have the money to invest. Uh, you understand? So if I'm looking to buy a house, if I'm looking to own a house, what I will be looking at is either putting my money into the bonds where it increases. I take when it when it comes out, I definitely would have to buy a home. Yes. You understand? It. I always say that no matter what, I'm a, I'm a developer, no matter where you t put your money or no matter where you make your money, it's a good portion of it will come back to real estate. You understand? So it's, it's a case of... It's for those, for those that want to do business, already landlord, they have their houses of their own. Mm -hmm. They will not bring their money to you in real estate. Mm -hmm. Because they are investors, yes. they are looking for where they can multiply their money. Mm. Not so homes to live, not homes to live. already have one. But many people in the real estate, what made the real estate sector to thrive is not people trying to get house to live in. Yeah. It's people now buying more houses 
and renting out. Yeah. So investment yeah. purposes. Investment purposes. Yeah. That's what actually drive the real estate mm -hmm. business in this country. So now it will only be left for those that are looking for houses to own. Which a smart investor should go for that way to own if mm -hmm. you want to be in business. Because you're looking for those big investors that bring money to buy and now rent. You have to go direct to those that want to rent by renting to them to own. I mean, you're, you're, you're quite advocating for this rent to own. Uh, <laughs> yes, style the, of the president is talking about it. Yeah. The, the, the unrest in the country is because people, their basic needs are not met. You need food, you need shelter, you need clothing. Those are the basic needs. Yes. And for our country to measure up as a developed nation, we should move in that direction to make sure people have what to eat, have shelter over their heads and clothing. When those three are met, you reduce unrest. So even with the government, like our president is doing, in providing accommodation, housing, they should do it in a scale that will catch up with our growth. And even any subsequent government that is coming should move in that direction. We should have a policy plan that is 10-year policy, 20-year uh, plan for that housing that will be sustainable. Otherwise, this unrest may get out of hand. You know, when, when we talk about affordable housing, uh, to uh, the middle and upper, um, uh, you know, income class, it might seem like, yes, affordable housing is really affordable, but to the lower class, what might seem affordable to the middle and, and higher income class is not really affordable, especially for people who are migrating to the FCT from different parts of the country, rural communities in different parts of the country, due to one out of many reasons, insecurity. If perhaps the, um, uh, the renewed hope city stands, and civil servants, servants start moving into these houses and leaving their own houses that they now occupy vacant. How, uh, how is it possible to have people migrating, you know, being able to pay for these houses that the civil servants are currently staying in? Okay, so I think there are different systems at which people can actually pay for these houses. So we have the outright payment, um, of course. The, those who have the money to split into the payment plans and then we have the mortgage options and then the rent um, to rent to own. Yeah. Now, um, I, I would say that the government has really looked into this in terms of providing optional payments and you see the mortgage um, loans or the mortgage rather is not just accessible to civil servants yes. even non-civil servants can access this so it's now a case of the productivity in, um, in, in the aspect of the person looking seeking to access these um, um, houses mm -hmm. these loans or these um, affordable houses by the government so at the end of the day like i would say the government cannot do everything but it can provide a platform for this particular project in terms of the renewed hope um, housing project um, those who are not in the class of the civil servants who are probably not earning that much can look at the rent to own or they could look at the mortgage you understand yeah. and the, i think these are options that they can look at and then with time it gives them the time to be able to work and actually remit to own their own houses so i think it's an option to look at L let me come back to you engineer mm -hmm. uh, i mentioned earlier that there is an influx of people into the fct yeah. now if these people come in here and they do not have homes to live in they would resort to sleeping on the streets on the bridges which of course the abuja environmental protection agency is fighting head on to ensure that nothing like that happens as in the case of Lagos. Mm -hmm. However, if people do not have homes to live and they live in shanties or they sleep on the streets, there will be agitations and eventually uh, there will be an increase in the crime rate in the FCT, which already we are seeing tendencies, you know, springing up from different quarters of, of the federal capital territory. How can we stop this head on? You know, this mass inflow of people into the FCT, uh, the, the federal capital city is getting overpopulated, if you ask me. How can we manage this uh, particular development? Okay, with the, with the policy of Mr. President, a really hope a plan for cities, Yes. which cuts across the six geopolitical zones, 1,000. And if, if, they, if they are going to do this particular one, you mentioned the address yesterday for three years. I don't know. Or uh, is this one really? Yeah, yeah, well, really? We, have, we have already established that people who are not civil servants might not be able to access okay. homes in the renewed hope city. Yeah. Now, my question is for people who are 
migrating to the city center not civil servants not businessmen not well-to-do people yeah. they are coming to find their feet or coming to find their feet yeah. coming for greener pastures and there is no place to live in that's where the option of um, one temporary structures that are decent yes. comes in with an arrangement of um, um, monthly payments yeah. also comes in then uh, I, have not, I don't know if maybe I have something like refugee arrangements like well, 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 in, in, in the case of uh, the, the northeastern part of the country where well, we, we've it. seen IDP camps yeah. due to the Boko Haram yeah, insurgency but, but the, the incident here is that for someone that doesn't have uh, a decent place it should be a designated or provided place by government that can be a makeshift arrangement either with some kind of arrangement of little pay or weekly pay or monthly pay till they are able to get something doing and move like there are some container lights or glass I, I, I get online from China and all that yeah. they can just clear a particular section of the land and man those things and some of these people can ha we can have an agricultural plan where they can go and do some and farm and, 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 and what they would eat yes. They will eat. yes once we give them a decent place and they already know they are here people can get them and work in farms and have something they can leverage on to survive. Oh, all right, thank you very much, uh, Engineer Azubiki Chocho. Uh, to get your thoughts now in closing, in a few words, how can we stop the housing deficit in the FCT head on? I think um, it's just let's have a very, very um, visible presence of the government, you understand, in providing the right policies and also uh, helping to ease the inflation. And of course, and also because once the inflation is um, eased to some extent, to we'll have quite to some reasonable extent affordable construction materials. So I would see government policies, and then I, I would I would also talk about you know land use acts in terms of okay making lands quite affordable. Fair. Yes. Purchase. Yes. All right, gentlemen. Thank you very much for sharing your thoughts with us here in the studio yeah. concerning this matter. It's been a pleasure. Thank you very much.